What is archaeology? You probably think of old artefacts like flint tools, Roman coins and hill forts. But is this correct? What if archaeology could also consist of modern objects? Things that you wouldn't necessarily imagine. Cigarettes, cider bottles, anything. There's a new field of research called contemporary archaeology. It's beginning to argue that the study of material culture goes right up to the present. The studying the modern day is as viable as studying the ancient past. If that's true, then it could have serious repercussions for the entire subject itself. In this introduction, I want to unravel exactly what contemporary archaeology is. So come on, let's go and find out. I am on a journey of discovery to discover exactly what contemporary archaeology is. To do that, we first need to understand what archaeology was. So here we've got a family tree of archaeology. Right at the top here we've got antiquarianism. There we go, rich people getting other people to dig for them. Then we get cultural historical, that's Scandinavians obsessed with typology. Then comes processionalism. Archaeologists like Lewis Binford, who put too much science in their archaeology, and then post-processionalism, those who didn't. And then right at the bottom, here we are, contemporary archaeology. It's the bastard child of post-processionalism and modernism. So now we've seen where it's come from, what does contemporary archaeology consist of, and what do contemporologists dig up? A recent excavation of Turbo Island in Bristol can help us understand. This is a bit of what's known as mocha ware. These patterns, which looks as if they're beautifully painted, were actually made by a sort of combination of, of tobacco and urine that, were, <laughs> that was put on the surface, and it created these spiral designs, these sort of breakaching designs. When it came to the contemporary finds, however, the street drinkers of Stokes Croft became the real experts. We have a sterica, right, and the drug services provide them for, to homeless people so they can cook the heroin up before they inject it rather than use the bottom of a tin can. Right. The finds from Turbot Island illustrate how contemporary items can reveal personal and collective stories. It's also a great example of how archaeology can work with sections of the local community, especially those who are overlooked by more traditional scholarship. So let's have a look at some more contemporary finds. This stuff is similar to the stuff we found at Stokes Croft, but it's from a recent service collection in Bristol. Here's what you might consider the classic archaeology, but for this project, we're not interested in it. Here, John has been working on the pottery finds, but first, let's have a look at these finds and see what they can tell us about the people behind them. So, these finds may look like rubbish, but that's the essence of what archaeology is. It's rubbish that people have thrown away, like this beautifully ornate Ian McShane album. Over here, we've got some fantastic kittenware, and you see the lovely design on that, and you can see that there's no inclusions, which means that's a very high quality piece of pot. And here, this is what John has been working on, this absolutely wonderful vessel, near complete, and it really does come up beautifully when you recreate it like this. Absolutely fantastic archaeology. All of these items tell their own personal stories that have become unravelled through the use of contemporary archaeology. In 2006, a team of contemporologists excavated a 1991 Ford Transit van in Bristol. Wow! The project utilised many aspects of a more conventional excavation and some of the skills required at a job interview at QuickFit. By blending traditional archaeological techniques with contemporary accounts, the team compiled an extensively thorough report of the transit van. The project has proved a valuable lesson in how archaeology can be applied to modern objects, even if they're above the ground. A 
similar excavation is underway in the attic of a flat in Exeter. I went along and met project leader Max Dexter to find out how they were progressing. I'm here on site with Dr. Max Dexter and his team who are excavating an attic here in Exeter. Max, the uh, working conditions look pretty cramped up there. Oh, it's extremely cramped, Brooklyn. In fact, there's only really room for one person. But it's not too dissimilar to working in a prehistoric cave, for example. I can imagine that. So what have you found so far? Oh, well, we found numerous artefacts from pot sheets to paper cups, like this. That's fantastic. And is there anything else? Well, it's funny you should say that, actually, because we're just coming down onto the levels of occupation as we speak. That is absolutely cutting edge. That's fantastic. By using traditional techniques such as troweling in a contemporary building, the project here is also looking to explore how archaeology can relate to the modern world. What hits me, Max, is that contemporary research like this is using those classic archaeological techniques to get really close to those human stories. It's asking questions without actually asking any questions. Yes, well, I think it's a very rewarding subject, Brooklyn, and the results are just truly outstanding. The project in Exeter is already paying off. The ongoing work will undoubtedly continue to discover more in the future. I will leave Max and his team to finish off the vital job of recording such a unique sight. The projects in Bristol and Exeter have, if nothing else, stoked the fires of debate within the archaeological world. During this brief introduction to the discipline, we've seen exactly what contemporary archaeology is. We've seen where it's come from and where it's going to. In my opinion, it all boils down to one simple question. When should archaeologists stop looking at material remains? Should it be 2,000 years ago? Should it be 200 years ago? Should it be 20 seconds ago? Ultimately, that's for you to decide.